I'd really like the organisation to feel like a different place as part of the perfect week. Um, I'd like it to feel like there's no queues in the hospital. Um, I'd like people to feel empowered to try things that they might not otherwise try um, in order to keep the hospital queue free. Um, and um, I'd like to get that buzz back in the organisation that we had in November 2013 when we were really doing well um, and our uh, patients were not experiencing any delays in A&E or anywhere else in the hospital. And so each group has been asked to come up with a plan uh, about how they're going to deliver their own perfect week. Um, so anybody who works in a team um, will be able to raise their idea through uh, their group management structure. And we're encouraging people to just try things, um, you know, to uh, get rid of some of the uh, constrained thinking that we sometimes have. If it works, great, we'll keep going, and if not, well, we'll have learned something. My perfect week suggestion would be that everybody has a drip sun by their bedside. My perfect week is we need a bigger waiting room for 22 SAO, and we also need a telly. Please. My suggestion for the perfect week is that doctors commence TTAs on admission to hospital and that they are completed 24 hours before discharge. The integrated discharge team have been working with social care colleagues to trial their assessment tool called FACE, which stands for a functional assessment in a care environment. The idea behind that is so that we can do work towards single assessments, is that it's accepted by providers, so it prevents duplication, it prevents reassessment, it can then be downloaded onto social care systems so that actually the assessment process can continue in the community and to prevent patients going through the same questions over again. Our IT guys have been working with social care's IT to try and look at how we can move this forward, so hopefully the, the more we utilise it, the more efficient we'd be um, and actually the benefits for the patients. So, that's, that's all done. Um, so at UHCW, associated with our Getting Emergency Care Right program, we had a set of metrics that we monitor every week, and those include uh, number of people discharged from every ward in the hospital, number of people readmitted. Uh, to the wards, the number of people admitted from emergency department uh, and also the time the TTOs are prescribed. So whilst we already have that system in place and we've introduced some other metrics, we have a clarity, absolute clarity uh, as to a performance at a ward level. So we will be able to um, ascertain very easily and, and clearly our progress uh, after the perfect week. Right. Some people prefer holding on to the work top yes. and the balance is good. In your case, you can try, from my perspective, your balance is quite okay. So we've looked at the service that we're providing for our patients and um, altered the, we firstly altered the working hours that we're doing. So we are providing a twilight service, which means that patients will be seen up until seven o'clock in the evening. Uh, this means that we will take into consideration the visiting times, so we will meet relatives and be able to discuss with patients, um, family, discharge plans, progress with, with therapy, um, and get that vital information that you can't always get on the phone in the week. Last night I worked the first twilight service and it was quite beneficial. I was able to liaise with relatives to to start some discharge planning and just kind of coordinate things from that approach rather than doing it over the phone. We also saw a couple of patients who came back from theatre, so we were able to do bed exercises and get them out of bed. So that was very useful and made, meant we could uh, do a bit more progression today rather than starting from scratch. We're also providing a seven day service for occupational therapy, so that means that they will be working on a full day on a Saturday and Sunday. We're also making sure that we're um, attending two daily board rounds, so we're joining again in the afternoon to improve communication, identify discharges across the team um, and ensure that things like TTOs are, are done in a timely fashion um, and inform nursing staff of, of progressions in treatment so that they can contribute towards their recovery. Main issues um, over the last 12 months in the day surgery are we've had a lot of inappropriate patients that have um, been on the ward area. so. Each morning when the staff have come on, the ward has been sometimes full. We've had to cancel patients or they've had long waits to get through to the beds. Or sometimes if they're overnight patients that are not being discharged, they may be here for a number of days, which does block the beds not only for a short period of time, but 
for a longer period of time. We started by looking the day before to see what theatre lists there are and then we're identifying patients that could potentially come straight to us from main theatres and therefore it would um, free the block in main theatres and allow us to have more patients as well as having our own normal day surgery patients as well. We've also got a discharge lounge as well and that enables us to free the beds up on the ward quicker by letting the patients come down here as well and it's all working really well. So in second stage, we have uh, several hours of delay. Ideally, patients should have gone back to ward after 15 minutes of being ready from the recovery. But we have had a ward liaising officer who came and assessed the situation and uh, where we have three patients, three neuro patients who were waiting in recovery for a ward bed. The liaising officer went up to ward 43 and uh, she made the discharge quickly and those patients went back to the ward within few minutes time. It's mainly uh, like taking the TTOs, if there's any defects in the ward, report them, uh, chase patients' discharges, make sure the patients have been seen by, every patient seen by uh, consultants on doctor's rounds. And on free time, just communicate with the patients. Just, just have a chat, you know. The perfect week is a very good idea for uh, non-clinical staff to come and see the clinical areas to see how frontline staff work. It's like a Japanese proverb says, if we all do a little, we can do a lot. And hopefully, it'll be all positive. Okay, so, and you go to your GP to go pick it up, don't yeah. you? So to uh, support the perfect week, the pharmacy team have implemented a floor-based team. Uh, that team's there throughout the day with a, a strong presence for all the staff and patients. And the primary objective is to improve patient flow by ensuring that the near patient dispensing services are used to uh, process TTOs. We're also there to help with medicines management on the ward. So putting the stocks away, sorting out the drug trolleys and ensuring that patients' drugs are repatriated to them when they move um, either home to other wards as well. With this, we're able to counsel all patients on the medication and ensure that they all have an accurate drug history and the drugs are reconciled accordingly. And lastly, this weekend, where um, we have some volunteers who are coming in from the pharmacy team and they're going to go around the hospital and do drug histories and medicines reconcile all new admissions on the weekend to see what impact this has on the Monday and Tuesdays which are primarily known as a, a bad day for the trust. So we've got this new bit of equipment on loan to us for the next month and we've just received it this week so we're using it with one of our sickest patients. This has to go onto a specialist ventilator so this piece of equipment is really ideal for him. It means that we can begin to mobilise him um, earlier than we normally would be able to. Rehab kind of takes a back seat because we have to prioritise um, respiratory treatment so to be able to do rehab we normally have to leave it kind of until later in the day and see if we have capacity to do it because the flow has improved this week and the unit is a little bit calmer, it means there are more hands available. So to be able to do it every day rather than just a couple of days each week is really, really important. And I think because of, of, of um, the additional capacity this week, we're going to be able to continue to do this gentleman's rehab over the weekend, which will make a real difference to him as well. We don't live in a perfect world, but here at UHCW, we all understand our vision, uh, which is to be a national and international leader in healthcare and we want to do that as close to perfect as possible and to do it every day, every moment for every patient is our aim.